What's going on YouTube? Brad here from Fowler's Farmhouse and More. And today we're gonna to talk about stovetop covers, or as some people call them, noodle boards. Uh, very easy project, not gonna need a whole lot, but the biggest concern you'll have is making sure you get the correct measurements from the customer. You wanna ask them to measure their stove and send you the dimensions, that way you know that you're building a stovetop cover for their specific oven. Uh, all you're gonna need is this one by three for your handles, uh, a one by six for the actual surface, and then top by two, wood glue, Craig pocket hole screws, uh, Craig jig, and of course the handles, and you'll be ready to roll. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just cut off this edge, because you don't really know how good it is from the store itself, so we'll cut that off, give us a good straight edge, then we'll start measuring our planks and cutting them. Get your first cut it's easier just to go ahead and lay that cut on top of the uh, next board and that way you know that your cuts are all going to be the same exact length Now that all your boards are cut, I'm gonna lay them all out together, how our surface is gonna be. And I like to go through and mark where I'm gonna put my pocket holes. Uh, usually I like to start by going about two to three inches off the corner, and then just do one every six or so inches. You shouldn't need too many for a small project like this. Also, when you put your pocket holes in here, it's good to put them all in the same direction. So whenever we put our line here, we'll just go up, put another line on all three. That way you have good symmetry. Hmm. Right, now that we got our lines marked up, we're gonna put our pocket holes. Uh, you go ahead and take your gauge on this, that comes with the kit, measure the board. It's closest to a half. So we'll set our settings on here to a half. And then we'll also set our lock collar here to a half. Go ahead and set that on there. Any old clamp will work. These are Harbor Freight. I prefer Bessie's, but take what you can get when you're on a budget. Get that good and snug so it doesn't move. You run your pocket hole. We're gonna do that on all of our boards. all four boards and then we'll glue them. Now that we've got our pocket holes drilled, we got our clamps out, we're gonna put these two boards together. We're only gonna do two right now because what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue these and then we're gonna run them through the planer. That way whenever we're done, we have both of them pretty level. Let's go ahead and glue these together. You just want to snug it, you don't want to over tighten it. All right, now that we got our glue in, we got them pressed together, we're gonna to run a couple screws in just to give that a good hold. We don't want to over torque our screws, just snug. A 
we'll let that dry for a minute. I forgot one. And just like that other panel, we're gonna do the same thing here. A quick bead of glue. The glue is gonna be doing most of your, your holding. The screws are just for a little reassurance. Once you get all your screws in, just take a rag and wipe off the excess glue. All right, now that our two panels have uh, had time to dry a little bit, we're gonna run them through the planer. Try to give us a nice level surface between the two boards. Now you don't necessarily have to have a planer, but it does make life a little bit easier as far as getting the boards the same fit. But our planer is not big enough, so what we're going to do for this one, same process as before, bead of glue, a couple screws, but when we're going to make it together, we're going to clamp it on the ends, that way it actually holds it. But All right, now that we've let our uh, noodle board have some dry time, we've got one solid piece, and we're gonna go to work sanding it. We'll start out with probably an 80 grit, and work up to about a 240 grit. I think that'll be sufficient for what we need to go up. Through all of our grits, we have a nice smooth top. One of the big things you got to keep in mind though is you did glue these joints, so if you have any glue that squeezed out, you really want to make sure you get that taken care of. Otherwise, when you stain it, it'll stand out like a sore thumb. So now we'll cut our handles down and get them mounted up. I know we mentioned before that we're a small shop with a small budget, and I don't have a miter stand, and my workbench is currently preoccupied. So this doesn't hurt anybody. Set it on the ground. We're gonna zip off this end, we'll measure it out, we're gonna make our handles for our noodle board. 
All right, now that we got our handles cut, we're gonna put a little bead of glue on each side. We're gonna stick them through there and clamp them, and then we'll flip it over and put our screws. Make sure when you're putting glue, you don't put too much. That way you don't have too much squeeze up because you don't wanna to have to re-sand this. That's me high enough. Alright, she's all clamped up. We're gonna let her sit there for a moment and uh, let our glue dry. Alright, now that our glue's dried for our handles, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pre-drill some holes underneath for our screws. Then we're gonna run our screws in. screws are in so we're going to give it a quick sand over and then we'll pass it off to the wife for some stain. Now that my husband has finished all the sanding on the noodle board this customer wanted a dark walnut stain so I'm going to stain the bottom first and then I'll flip it over and then stain the top once the bottom dries. So now that my stain has dried, I came in side, used my Cricut and cut my stencils. Well, obviously I measured first. 
and then I made my stencils and cut them on my Cricut and now I'm going to get them on the new board with Mod Podge So I have put my Mod Podge on. The reason I do the Mod Podge before I do the paint is so that way it keeps it from bleeding through my stencil. So when I let it dry, I will add my paint on. Now that my paint is dry, as you see I've already started peeling the stencil off, I'm going to peel the stencil off. Now that I have peeled my stencil off of my S and my leaf design, I have added the second stencil that the customer wants on their noodle board. I have put my Mod Podge on there and I will let it dry and then I will add the paint to it. Okay, so now that the paint is dry on the noodle board, I'm going to do some spray poly on the noodle board. Now that our polyurethane is dried, we're gonna put our handles on. So far we've measured out, we got them centered. So we're just gonna take our screws and go ahead and install. Now that our handles are installed, our noodle board is complete. Very nice too. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.